the 761 Tank Battalion was one of three of the United States Army's segregated tank battalions to serve during World War II. They were nicknamed the Black Panthers, and the battalion spent over 183 consecutive days in combat. This is One My Black History, and I'm your host, Country Boy. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, you can find more content like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so in my Patreon page or my Buy Me Coffee in the description below. Also, subscribe, support the YouTube channel, and give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. But without further ado, let's get started. New on Curiosity Stream, how do you connect a 16th century potato to limitless energy production? Could Napoleon's toothpick have a direct link to a machine that predicts the future? And how can a 1700s conch shell chart a course to humans connecting their brains to the internet? James Burke's visionary series, Connections, returns for a new generation. Experience all new Connections. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. With the world on the brink of war, the United States started mobilizing for World War II. Military officials began to debate whether or not African-American soldiers should be used in armored units. Many in the military and politicians believed that blacks did not have the brains, quickness, or moral stamina to fight. Colonel James A. Moss, commander of the 357th Infantry Regiment, spoke about his World War I experiences, stating, As fighting troops, the Negro must be rated as second-class material, and this is primarily due to his inferior intelligence and lack of mental and moral qualifications. And Secretary of War Henry L. Stinson was resigned to the fact that blacks would serve in the military, but had very strong reservations about their capabilities in specific areas like the armored force. The military firmly embraced these beliefs leading up to World War II, even though African Americans have fought with courage and distinction in every major war since the Revolutionary War and completely overlooked the fact that during World War I, four black regiments had served with the French and their efforts were recognized by the French government and three of the four regiments were awarded the coveted Cure de Guerre by the French military. Only the United States Chief of Ground Forces, Lieutenant General Leslie Nair, was the voice of reason for African Americans serving in armored units. He believed that the nation could not afford to exclude any potential asset. Although many in the military didn't see a need for African Americans in armored units, McNair was determined that black men would fight. So, with McNair's unwavering support, the black press, the NAACP, and the Congress for Racial Equality all placing increasing pressure on the War Department and Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration to allow black soldiers to serve and see combat. So in the summer of 1940, the Congress passed the Selective Training and Service Act. The act stated that in the selection and training of men in this act, there shall be no discrimination on any persons based on color or race. But in October, the White House issued a statement stating that the service of Negroes will be utilized on a fair, equitable basis. And the policy of segregation in the armed forces would continue to mirror social norms. Back during World War I, the first light tank battalion was organized in France under Lieutenant Colonel George S. Patton Jr. In his command, these battles gave the idea of how better tanks could accomplish greater things on the battlefield in the future. He saw the tank corps as an independent combat arm. However, the Army's high command and members of the United States Congress didn't share Patton's views. The National Defense Act of 1920 would abolish the tank corps as an independent arm. Tank units then became under control of the infantry it wouldn't be for 20 years that the armored force was created. With the outbreak of World War II in Europe, the American army prepared for war with the creation of the armored force and headquartered it in Fort Knox, July 10th of 1940. It was responsible for establishing armored formations, doctrine, training, and then the use of armored vehicles. The Selective Service Act was then implemented and thousands of citizen soldiers were ordered to report to Fort Knox and introduced to tanks. See, the U.S. lagged behind Europe in both tank development and tactics, with the Army believing that Germany had a superior tank force. Also, many students arrived to Fort Knox with either no military training or had yet 
to attend basic training. So this created tremendous urgency within the tank force who compensated for this urgency with a frenzied comprehensive training approach. Amid this training frenzy, the first group of black tankers arrived in Fort Knox, Kentucky in March of 1941 for armored warfare training with the 758 Tank Battalion, the first of three battalions to serve with the 5th Tank Group, the only predominantly black tank outfit established in the military during World War II. The 5th Tank Group was commanded by Colonel Leroy Nichols and was made up of black enlisted personnel with white officers, but these officers would gradually be replaced with black officers as they completed training. These pioneer black tankers trained in light tank operations, mechanics, and in related phases of mechanic warfare on the M5 light tank. Once the 758 tank battalion was in place, two more tank battalions were needed to complete the 5th tank group. So in March 15th of 1942, the War Department activated the 761 tank battalion in Camp Claiborne, Louisiana. And then in September 15th of 1943, the 761 tank battalion was moved to Camp Hood, Texas for advanced training. And there they changed from light to medium tanks. It would be to April 1st of 1943, the final battalion, the 784, would be activated. Many of the listed men and officers never left Fort Hood because of the racism that they experienced in the local towns. On July 6, 1944, one of the 761's few black officers, Lieutenant Jackie Roosevelt Robinson, was riding on a civilian bus from Camp Hood to the nearby town of Belton. He refused to get to the back of the bus when asked by the driver, although the Army had commissioned this to be an unsegregated bus line. When the bus reached the end of the line, the bus driver summoned the military police, who then took Robinson into custody and court martial charges would ensue. But it would not proceed because the battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Bates, would not consent to the charges. The top brass at Fort Hood then transferred Robinson to the 758 Tank Battalion, whose commander immediately signed the court martial consent. Robinson was charged with violating the 63rd and 64th Articles of War for having disrespected General Bear of the military police. He was eventually acquitted and given an honorable discharge in November 1944. Three years later, he would go on to break baseball's color barrier. Although many within the 761 thought they would never see combat, the men of the 761 still trained hard to prove that they could fight through seemingly endless maneuvers through early of 1944. The high marks and hard work during training did not go unnoticed by Army's high command. General Ben Lear, commander of the U.S. 2nd Army, rated the unit as superior after a special review and deemed the unit combat ready. Still, it was seemingly unlikely in this late stage of the war that they would actually see combat. But on June 6, the Allies implemented Operation Overlord, the D-Day invasion of Europe. With American forces already experiencing heavy casualties, particularly among M4 Sherman tanks, the 761 was now the best trained and most able-bodied armored force in the United States military. So on October 10, 1944, after two years of intense training, the 761 landed in France via Omaha Beach and then moved to Belgium at the beginning of November. The unit was assigned to General George Patton's 3rd Army at his request and attached to the 22nd Infantry Battalion. General Patton famously gave the Black Panthers a welcome, stating, Men, you're the first Negro tankers to ever fight with the American Army. I would never have asked for you if you weren't good. I've seen nothing but the best in my army, and I don't care what color you are as long as you go out there and you kill those crowd sons of bitches. Everyone has their eyes on you and is expecting great things from you, and most of all, your race is looking forward to your success. Don't let them down, and damn it, don't let me down. Privately, however, Patton harbored the same doubts as many of his white officers about black soldiers and was still sort of reluctant to commit to them in combat. On November 8th, 1944, the Black Panthers became the first African-American armored unit to enter combat, and they came under heavy fire in the towns of Monvic and Vicksreville. During the attack, the men encountered a roadblock that held up their advance. Without waiting for orders, Staff Sergeant Reuben Rivers climbed out of his tank under heavy enemy fire, attached a cable to the roadblock, and removed it. Barely a week later, Reuben Rivers was fatally wounded, providing cover fire while his men retreated from an enemy attack. For his valor, he received two silver stars and in 1997, the Congressional Medal of Honor. 
On November 10th, Sergeant Warren G.H. Creasy fought through enemy positions with the aid of his men until his Sherman tank was destroyed. Creasy jumped out, took charge of the 30 caliber machine gun on a nearby American half track and used it to wipe out the enemy position that had just destroyed his tank. The following day, leading another tank attack when his tank was bogged down in the mud, Creasy again dismounted under heavy enemy fire and worked to extricate it from the mud. While he was doing so, he saw that the 26th Infantry Division was pinned down with the enemy beginning a counterattack. Without hesitation, Creasy climbed up to a turret of a 50 caliber machine gun and used it to suppress the enemy while the foot soldiers would retreat. It seemed the more fire he drew, the harder he fought. After that battle, he too will receive a civil medal for gallantry in action. The Black Panthers would continue on and push, but at this point they were in desperate need of personnel replacements and low on functioning tanks. All of these things at this point in the war were hard to come by. So as a result, the 761 was not committed to fight in the first days of the Battle of the Bulge. But in January of 1945, they were sent into action again. And from December 31st, 1944 to February 2nd of 1945, these 761 took part in the American counteroffensive following the Battle of the Bulge. During a major battle in Tittle, Belgium, the 761 fought for two continuous days against German panzer and infantry units before the Germans withdrew in the face of a heavy Black Panther attack. Later, as the armored force of the 103 Infantry Division, the 761 took part in assaults that resulted in the breach of the Siegfried Line. The Siegfried Line was the German defense system that stretched almost 400 miles on the western part of Germany. From March 20th to March 23rd of 1945, they operated far in advance of friendly artillery and faced vicious German resistance. Elements of the 761 destroyed several defensive positions along the Siegfried Line, captured seven German towns, and during that three-day period, the battalion inflicted 4,000 casualties on the German army and fought elements of 14 different German divisions. April 26, 1945, the Black Panthers will be one of the first U.S. battalions to meet up with Soviet forces, converging with the Russian army and steer Austria. The convergence of Russian and U.S. armies split the last of the German army in two and hastened the end of the war in Europe. May 8, 1945, officially ended the war in Europe. The 761 will remain in Germany for another year before being deactivated June 1, 1946. During combat operations in World War II, the Black Panthers served for 183 consecutive days without relief. Most frontline troops rarely spent more than a few weeks among the front lines. The 761 was known as the Bastard Battalion because elements of the battalion served with several different infantry divisions in support roles. The Black Panthers fought in major engagements in six different European countries and participated in four major Allied campaigns. They were aligned at various times to the 3rd, 6th, and 9th Army, and the unit inflicted 130,000 casualties on the German army and captured, destroyed, or aided in the liberation of more than 30 towns, several concentration camps, four airfields, and three supply dumps. All of this was accomplished despite the loss of 71 tanks and overall casualty rate approaching 50%. The 761 was highly decorated, earning throughout the six months of their combat operation seven silver stars for valor, 246 Purple Hearts, and one Congressional Medal of Honor. In 1976, the 761 Tank Battalion received the Presidential Unit Citation. In 2005, a monument dedicated to 761 Tank Battalion was unveiled at Fort Hood, Texas. It serves as a permanent tribute to the black soldiers who fought and served for liberty, honor, and democracy. Thank you. I'm your host, Country Boy, and this has been One Mike Black History. If you like this, you love this, you can find more content like this, onemikehistory.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on my Patreon page and my Buy Me Coffee. Please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and support the YouTube channel. Peace.